Hi, this is Ed Lieberman, and this demo on folder redirection, shadow copies, and disk quotas is from my Small Business Server 2011 training course. So the first thing I'm going to show you is folder redirection. Now we saw folder redirection when we were creating users and, and user roles and stuff like that. But right here under the shared folders, over here on the right, it says redirect folders for user accounts to the server. If I click on that, you'll see here that we have our folder redirection properties. And by default, desktop and documents will be redirected. The start menu can be redirected, although I'll tell you, there's not nearly as much of a purpose. I mean, people don't really get too crazy with customizing their start menu anymore. And the reason why is because the start menu's come a long way and it, it's pretty cool just the way it is even without having to customize it. But if you have a situation with users who are customizing it and you want to have it backed up, you can go ahead and you can redirect the start menu as well. Okay, so basically we're just saying for users, we're going to redirect their desktop and their documents to the server. Here where it says user accounts, we get to select the accounts that we want to do folder redirection on. And you'll notice there's four boxes checked already. Aileen, Carmen, Michelle, and Sandra. Do you remember what is significant about those four and why they would have their boxes checked but nobody else would? Well, if you're thinking it's because of the user role that was created for the sales users and that these four were all part of that role, that's exactly right. In other words, let me go ahead and cancel out of here. Go back over here to users and groups. These four are all part of the sales user role. And as a result, if I go into their properties under folders, we enabled folder redirection to the server. Now, as long as I'm on this screen, let's jump to the last feature I talked about, which is disk quotas. Here you will see that we are enforcing a quota to where the shared folder, they only get one gig. Okay, that's how we're limiting it. We're putting a quota. We also could have put a quota on that folder redirection. And what that means is the user might be thinking, hey, I got this huge hard drive on my computer. Doesn't matter. They're going to be limited to whatever quota you put out there for the folder redirection share. Now that's how you can control quotas through the SPS console. If we go into Windows Explorer, right click, go to properties, you'll see that I can click on quota, and this is for the C drive, show quota settings. This is where I can manually set up quotas for this entire drive. Okay, this is where I can go in and I can say for the C drive on this server, and just as easily, I could go to the D drive, properties, look at the quota for the D drive. I could enable quota management for the drive as a whole. I can choose to deny disk space for users exceeding their quota limit. Now, if you're thinking, why would you enable it but not deny? You can actually enable it, not have it deny the user the ability to save, but then go ahead and, well, first of all, they're going to get a message coming up on their screen saying they're out of disk space. But you could also log events into the event viewer. And then you can, be, you know, if you're reviewing those event logs regularly, you would see, uh-oh, such and such is using up all their space. But maybe they're doing mission critical stuff and you don't want to actually stop that from happening. But let's say we are going to stop them from exceeding their quota limit. The default quota limit for all users can be limited to whatever size you want. And you'll see here that we could limit this, let's say to um, one gig. And we can do a warning, let's say at, um, we'll say 100, or I guess technically that should be 900 because we, we want to say when they get to 900 megabytes. Okay? That's if we want to do it for all users on the entire D drive. Under the quota entries button here, this is where we could go in and we could create an individual quota entry for individual users. Here's what I'm going to recommend. Don't do individual quota entries. 
Okay, it's just a lot of work for yourself. You're much better off setting an overall quota for everybody. If there's an individual who needs to go beyond that quota, then you might create a quota entry to increase how much they can have. The reality is, is that you can control most of this through the user properties in the SBS console. Okay, you can control a lot of this by going into the properties of the users, or to be more specific, going to a user role, going into the properties of that role, and setting it up here. Okay, so that's how quotas work. Now, the last thing is shadow copies, which I actually have to take us back into Windows Explorer. Again, I can pick any drive to go to its properties, or I don't even have to go to its properties. I can just go to configure shadow copies. And here you'll see all the drives. You'll notice that the C drive has it enabled, D drive and E drive are disabled. The truth of the matter is, is there is no reason to have, well, there may be some reason because we do have some shares out there. Typically, you don't necessarily want to be doing this on the C drive, so I'm going to actually disable this. And the reason why is because you don't want to be making these snapshot copies of all the various changes that the operating system is making on a constant basis. That is going to result in a fairly severe uh, performance deterioration. What you want to do is you want to go to your data drives, so your D drive or your E drive, and when you enable it, we can go into the settings. And here, it, first of all, this is where you can decide how much space on the hard drive we're willing to tie up with these little snapshot copies of the data. The default is 10%. Okay, so since this is a 100 gig hard drive, 10 gig is willing to be used for these shadow copies. I may not want to use 10 gig. I may want to reduce that, bring that down to more like 5 gig. The larger the amount of spaces that you're willing to tie up with shadow copies, the more copies, the more previous versions that you can have of people's stuff. The system is designed so that when this space is used up, this reserve space, when we've used up the entire, let's say, 5 gig, it will go ahead and take the oldest previous version and eliminate it to make room for the newer previous version. So it'll still work, you just won't have as many versions. Here's the schedule. By default, and, and this is something that I know that Microsoft loves to uh, quiz you about, is what is the default schedule? The default schedule is every Monday through Friday, so every weekday, at 7 a.m a snapshot is basically taken of all your stuff. And then there's a second time, which is at noon, every Monday through Friday. You could add to that. You could say, all right, how about at, let's go to 5 p.m. every Monday through Friday. Let's take a snapshot of our data. And by the way, when it's taking these snapshots of the data, it's only taking a snapshot of anything that has changed. So you're not going to end up having a snapshot of every single file on the entire drive taken those three times a day. Only the stuff that's been worked on and has been changed. And that's why I said the C drive is, you know, it can get quite crazy because it's changing so constantly. You also want to be careful if you ever have like a, 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 a very active SQL database or something like that, you probably don't want to enable shadow copies on those particular drives because again you're going to have a serious performance issue thanks for watching for more information regarding our training please visit www.trainsignal.com